You've just entered the theater of an alien sky. If the words and images seem strange to you, there's a reason for this. Our world was once a vastly different place. To experience this won't hurt you, and there is nothing to fear. Before we get too deeply into these presentations, I'd like to leave a few thoughts with you as to what we hope to achieve. We're exploring solar system history, Earth history, and human history from a radically new vantage point. At each step, our attention will be on a bedrock of fact. Yes, a bedrock of fact. I'll be using that phrase a lot because reliable conclusions do emerge from human testimony despite a thousand contradictions. The underlying concrete agreement will be impossible to deny. The first segments in this series will come largely from talks I've given in recent years, but will move as efficiently as possible into a much larger library of evidence. Our goal is to reconstruct the celestial spectacles that defined an early phase of human history, what we've called the myth-making epoch. Well-established facts will force us to reconsider many entrenched beliefs about the evolution of our planetary system. For several centuries, the space sciences have been trapped in the spell of an unjustified dogma. That dogma just assumed that planets have moved on their present courses for a billion years and more. But always remember, this was just a theoretical guess. As we'll see, that guess cannot withstand scrutiny. The facts I'll present will add up to a readily testable story. That's one of the promises I'm happy to make since we'll be drawing on three-dimensional representations of named planets gathered in a unique configuration extremely close to Earth. Electric discharge forms between these gigantic bodies metamorphosed in the sky above ancient witnesses. In the course of these segments, I'll talk about physicists, astronomers, plasma scientists, geologists, and others in the sciences who've already acknowledged the power of the evidence. We'll respond as best we can to comments and challenges, even answering questions that may have lingered in your own mind for years. This series is about the predictive power of a reconstruction. The global archetypes present to us a verifiable substructure of cross-cultural memory. Seen in three-dimensional space, the celestial forms will not allow us to just make things up. Hundreds of predictions will follow inherently and inescapably from the details of the reconstruction. If the forms and events reconstructed really did occur, what should we expect to find? And would anything presently experienced account for a single instance of the global patterns? How about memories of a primeval sun god ruling before the present sun? Or memories of a mother goddess identified globally as the planet Venus? Or worldwide descriptions of the planet Mars, always as a male figure, a great warrior whose far-famed weapon turns out to be a cosmic thunderbolt. Nothing like terrestrial lightning, however, but exactly like electric discharge configurations in the plasma laboratory. Suddenly, the ancient obsession with planets and planetary motions will make sense and the concrete descriptions of planetary gods will no longer surprise us. But the acid tests noted here are just the first scratches on the surface. Countless thousands of ancient drawings, sacred chronicles of the gods, and ritual reenactments must now be addressed in terms of an underlying agreement. That agreement is entirely coherent, and its parts are fully interdependent. One story told around the world. 